Hey guys, it's time for another DIY project. And on my previous projects, I've always waited until I was done and then said, oh, look what I built. This time, I'm gonna start beforehand and uh, try to do something a little different. But the inspiration for these, my wife has gotten a bazillion of these jars for some project that she's doing. They're like all over our house. Um, and so she gave me a handful of them and said, here, take these out to your workshop. You'll find something to do with them. So I've had these jars just sitting here on the workbench trying to think about it. Every time I look at them, I'm like, what can I do with this? And um, I've had a few different ideas, but I've thought that, man, it would be cool to put, to make an effect pedal out of one of these, and you'd have a little, you know, effect pedal in a jar. Well, here's the problem. If we look at this lid, right? So you got to keep in mind, you got to compensate for the glass here, which is pretty thick on these little jars. So, you know, you've got maybe this much space to work with. And you look at a guitar jack. I'm just going to set this down for the ease of doing this. A couple of guitar jacks there. And if you start to add potentiometers, and then if you have to add like a power supply, well, you're running out of room real quick. There just isn't that much room there. And especially when you're trying to, um, this is with one potentiometer. Most effects pedals have two or three. So I was like, okay, that's not going to work. So... I started scouring the internet trying to find a super simple effect pedal circuit. And I found one. And it's called the Baz Fuss. And here it is. So the Baz Fuss is clearly, somebody took bass fuzz and switched the Z's and the S's. But it's a very simple, extremely simple guitar circuit. And there are multiple iterations of it. These capacitors here, um, and this diode and the transistor, people have done different combinations and said they've had good results or bad results. But like I Googled about it, you can Google for it and look at schematics and, and demos and all that for days. I chose this one because whoever did this one actually came up with a nice schematic. And I figured if the guy took the time to do a schematic, it must have worked, right? <laughs> Because I've, I've read some things where people said they tried it and they thought it sounded terrible. And other things where people said they thought it sounded great. But So um, before we read this schematic, I should note that I am not an electrician. Um, I took a electronics class, a basic electronics class, in literally in seventh grade and learned like these basics and then started trying to fix stuff around the house. And that's how I learned electronics. So, you know, uh, if the things I say are not theoretically correct. If an electrician watches this, he's probably going to, you know, poke holes through it. But the point being, um, this is, this is the circuit. And so this here, this represents a stereo jack like this, a TRS jack. So we got one of those. This represents a mono jack like this. So we got one of those. This here represents a potentiometer. 100K, 100, yeah, 100K audio taper potentiometer. We've got one of those. Um, let's see here. This is a battery. So we could either use like a nine volt clip like this, or we could use, you know, a nine volt adapter and just plug a AC adapter into there. Um, or both, you could actually use both. But I, I don't think I'm going to use this. So I'm going to put it to the side. I think I'm just going to try to do it with a battery because that's one less thing to try to mount on the top of this tiny jar. Um, then these represent capacitors. Um, first, let's look at the transistor, by the way. So it's an MPAS-13, which I have one here somewhere. Here it is. MPAS-13 right there. Hopefully the camera can even focus on that. There we go. Okay, so that's this. We've got... A N4148, 1N4148 diode there. I know it's not going to be able to focus on. Oh, there it goes. There we go. So uh, that's right here, the diode. Actually, it would be like this if we're getting technical. I know I'm not building a circuit right now. We've got 10K resistor there. Ka-chow. We've got a couple of capacitor values here. We've got a 2.2 microfarad and a 0.1 microfarad. So these represent capacitors. Now, this is a film capacitor. This is actually the 0.1 microfarad or 100 nanofarad if you prefer to think about it that way. Really having trouble getting, there we go. Um, so 
That is what we have here. This, here we have a 2.2 microfarad, and that's what this is. But you notice, if you're an electronics guy, you'll notice this is a polarized capacitor. So see how we have negative marked on this side, which means positive is on this side. So this is a polarized capacitor. And if you know how to read a schematic, this shows a non-polarized capacitor. Um, so I believe, again, take my, <laughs> take my electronics expertise. I think you want the positive right here. Okay. So this should be the circuit. Should be very easy. So what I'm gonna attempt to do is build this. I'm not even gonna build a circuit board or anything for it because I wanna make it super small to fit inside here. By the way, nine volt battery right there. So I'm gonna try to, let's see here. If we put the battery in there, I probably should have tried this first. Huh? If we put the, it does fit sideways, okay. So if we put the battery in there, hopefully there's enough room. Yeah, it looks like there might be enough room for the uh, clip. And then I've got this much room here for the circuit to just hang. So I'm basically just gonna build the circuit right off this potentiometer. I don't know, this might work, it might not. Let's find out. So here we go. <laughs> Let's see if we can build a Jaro fuzz. Okay, so I hacked this together. It ain't pretty. <laughs> it ain't pretty at all. But if I read the schematic correctly, this should be, this should be correct. And you can see we've got three unattached ends. We have this with nothing going to it, this with nothing going to it, and this with nothing going to it. And if I'm reading this correctly, this end will go to the positive of the output jack. This end will come from the positive. Let's move this up here. There we go. Let's get this up here so you can see it. This end should be the positive from the input. This should go, this middle lug here, should go to the positive of the output this should go to the positive of the battery. And then the negatives from all three of those should come right back to here with this common ground on the transistor. I think. Okay. So, it ain't pretty. But if I read the schematic correctly, this is our circuit. So we should have the power source going in through the resistor, the input coming in through the electrolytic cap, the output coming out through the film capacitor, the um, center leg of the transistor going out to the uh, potentiometer there. Um, so I think, I think we did it. So let's plug it in and see if it works. Okay, here is the finished product. So you can see I put some labels on there, mainly because I needed to know which one was the in and which one was the out, because it's hard to tell. And then I labeled it the tiny jar of fuzz. Uh, put a knob on there. Um, this is just a, uh, what do they call these, a Davies style knob. So you can see that's 100% and that's 0%. Um, unless I wired the knob backwards, in which case that'd be, <laughs> that'd be, no, I'm pretty sure I got it right. But uh, I'm going to start it off maybe in the middle here somewhere, because I don't know how loud this thing is going to be. So here we go. Let's test out the tiny jar of fuzz. You can see I've got a little orange amp and a couple cables here. Um, so let's plug this thing in, try out a couple of, a uh, couple of different instruments. Okay, first things first here, let's grab my SG. Um, let's see here, Vol I got on the bridge pickup, volume and tone are all the way up. I dialed in a pretty clean sound here. So to give you an idea, it's a pretty clean tone we've got going on. So let's uh, try plugging it into the uh, jar of fuzz here and see what happens. Actually, let's do this. Shoot that as the outside. Plug that in over here. And I'll use this cable. And huh. Oh! Okay, we've got fuzz. Yeah, we got a little feedback too, but let's see what we can do here.
great. <laughs> All right, let's try a couple other instruments here. Ooh. It's a guitar amp and it's a small speaker, so it doesn't really handle those low notes well, but you can tell. 